major focus of mine right now is looking at how habitat disturbance, in particular uh, anthropogenic land use, uh, can affect the toxicity and the coloration and the signal kind of combined, uh, how they can affect the signal on kind of a fine scale approach, looking at heavily disturbed versus non-disturbed areas. So this is just a one meter quadrat that I can use. Um, some things we're doing is quantifying vegetation around different areas. So I uh, have regularly spaced areas that I measure this. So I'll drop it down, quantify the number of species there, the percent ground cover, uh, percent that's represented by leaf litter, things like that. And we also use the densiometer to measure the canopy coverage, um, measuring tree species, just trying to get an estimate and an idea of um, a way to quantify uh, how disturbed or undisturbed the land is in different areas. Um, so this is the densiometer. So you have these squares and you hold it about 18 inches in front of you and then you look up and you quantify in each square. You pick four random points and so you would do it in this direction, in this direction, in this direction, and in this direction and then average them for all of them. And so this will be correlated then with the measurements we're taking of like ambient light of the toxicity of the frogs, the carotenoids in the frogs, and stomach contents. And then in addition to all of that, we also use this, and I'll put it down in some areas, and I'll collect all the leaf litter within that one meter area, and I'll put them in Berlizzi funnels, and then extract the uh, leaf litter arthropods that are in there. And then we'll be looking at the carotenoid and uh, alkaloid availability in those as well, as just as, uh, as well as just uh, simple taxonomic identities. Part of what I'm doing is I take these sort of samples. I take I look at a bunch of variables. I look at the poison dart frog population. Mm -hmm. um, and then I also look at uh like canopy cover density and uh species richness and um, then I also do things like I take I have five points at each of my plots and I have three plots at each site and uh, at those five points, I take the morpho species. Like, I look at the species of plants that are there, and I try to determine by looking at them how many of the species there are. And then, um, I also... How many species of plants? How many species of plants, yeah. Sure. It's like an ecosystem health measure. You mm -hmm. have to see, like, biodiversity, so sample. But, um... Then, I also collect the leaf litter from one of the plots, or from like one of the points at each plot, and um, what we do is, and Justin's going to be doing this too, but what we do is we basically have something like this, and you put the leaf litter in here, and then you put it under a heat lamp. Mm -hmm. And what happens is, as it dries out, all the arthropods and insects go down to the bottom, and then they eventually fall into the alcohol, or the ethanol. So with one meter here, how many different parameters are you looking at? Probably about six or seven different things. Um, in addition to that also, we're just trying to count, just like I said, have a kind of metric for how disturbed or undisturbed. It's easy to say disturbed, and with this kind of example, you can look around and say, well, yes, you know, this is not an example of primary or secondary forest, but the difference between this and a couple hundred meters over there in this forest is difficult uh, just to express by words. So, you know, as we like to do, try to quantify it. With uh, what could be going on in these areas if the level of dietary carotenoids isn't the same due to things like disturbance? So if you have monoculture in an area, uh, you'd expect the diversity to be lower of leaf litter arthropods, and possibly the source of these carotenoids could be fewer. Um, same with toxicity, the alkaloids could be different because they just don't have uh, availability of as many because these are dietarily acquired as well. And so that's one reason I wanted to look at some people have noticed that the population densities don't change too much in areas of disturbance. Um, there might be some effects, but generally you don't have an absence of frogs. And I wanted to look and see if there was something else going on that's not easy to notice, not like densities of frogs, but something that's very, very important that's under strong selection pressures, but you wouldn't notice it looking at them just with the naked eye. And so that kind of led me um, to kind of get to my roots in more of a conservation angle and use the things, the evolutionary questions that I'm very interested in and kind of have a purpose to get back towards conservation and you know, hopefully be able to say something at the end of this and you know, have a great reason why we should be taking better care of this area and be more judicious stewards of the land.